So in today's video, I'm moving a lot of my adult snakes to the new rack I built, and we're gonna be moving a couple of other snakes into new bins. So if you watch the whole video, you'll get to see all this great stuff. Welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. <sighs> Guys, I'm excited to tell you I hit a thousand subscribers last night. I just wanted to take the time to say thank you to everybody. Everyone who keeps coming back. I know who comes back, leaves comments, always watching the videos, all the new subscribers and the ones that stuck through from the beginning. I feel humbled and honored that um, I actually hit that number because I never thought I would. You know, I don't do this full time. I have two jobs. I don't do this for money. It's just a passion of mine. And I'm so happy that you guys are here to share it with me. So I just wanted to take the time out to say thank you. And in this video, I'm gonna be moving all my adult to sub-adult colubrids to the new rack that I just built. So let's get to it. And let's make a toast to a thousand subscribers. So if you guys didn't check out one of my previous videos where I just built this sub-adult to adult rack for my colubrids, this is using the FB28 bins. Came out really nicely. So I'm gonna be moving all my three-year-olds to this uh, rack today. Uh, first, I'm gonna set up the thermostat. I'm using the VE from Vivarium Electronics. So basically you just follow the instructions. It's not hard. You just set the time, set the temperature. You got to take the probe and put it on the hot spot and just plug it in. That's it. If you guys need any help with it, send me a message and I'll help you guys out. So I just wanted to show you guys, this is the long cord and this is the probe. If I can get a good shot at it. So basically I use metal tape. I tape it on and I put it right on to the heat tape. And so just showing you guys exactly what I was talking about. I got the heat along the back. So I put it on the back. If it was on the actual shelf, you would put the probe on the bottom in the back where the heat is. And I'm not putting it on the actual metal part. I'm just putting it right in the middle. So just to give you guys a look exactly what it looks like. You got your time and it shows that's the temperature that the probe is at right now. Wherever you set the probe, that's the temperature. So that's the warm side. And on the top, 84 degrees, that's what I have it set on. And the green light is on, which means it's actually on. So soon it should hit the desired temperature of 84 degrees. Now I like this thermostat. I have another one and the herpostat may even be better than this one. So in the future, I might be looking to get a herpes step, but this one works really good, so I highly recommend it. And I got this one from Reptile Basics. So these are the 16 ounce deli cups that come with the FB28. So if you're ordering from Freedom Breeder, order these. It doesn't actually come with it, but you get a pack of 50 for about 16 bucks, maybe cheaper than that. And you could actually order them in bulk. You can get up to like 500 and it'll be way cheaper the more you get, but they come in handy. So we'll put that right in there. Let me show you guys what this looks like. The water bowl is in place and you can't even move it at all to get it out you gotta like really put some weight on it so it sits in there perfectly the snake can't knock it over and it's easy to clean you just pop it out and pop it in clean it pop it back in 
All right, so I'm excited. We're about to move the snakes into the bin. And the beauty about it is everybody's getting upgraded. We got the V35s down here, the V35S. And these are sizably smaller than the, the FB28s. So all of these guys are gonna go into the new rack. I actually have a couple in here that are getting pretty big. I'm gonna put in the new rack too. And then we got girls like this. They're still, they still fit in this bin, but they're kind of outgrowing it. So all the larger snakes that are in the V18s, like that one, and this uh, Het Ghost, and I got a Coastal Bandit, King Snake, I got a couple of them. So they kind of outgrew these, so I'm gonna move them here, move those to the new rack, and that's gonna open up a lot of V18s for whoever's coming out of uh, quarantine plus I have some snakes in my V15s, FB5s, that could actually go into the V18. So everybody, everybody's gonna be happy. So this is Pumpkin. She's gonna be the first girl going in. And I could see she's pretty swollen. Probably has eggs right now. And she's look, she looks like she's gonna shed, her, her prelay shed maybe in about a week or so. So I don't really want to pick her up. You can pick them up, you gotta be real gentle, but I'm gonna just tilt the bin over and let her go in on her own. All right. So there's Pumpkin in her new bin. She actually has a lot of space in this bin. On camera, it doesn't look as big as it really is, but there's a lot of space in here. And I'm gonna actually be putting moist hides in the back as lay boxes, just in case they wanna use them. Sometimes they don't. And right before they lay, you wanna remove the water bowl because sometimes they lay eggs in the water bowl and that could kill the eggs. So you put a little moist lay box in the back, which I'm gonna probably do tomorrow. And she's still about two or three weeks away from laying. So we put pumpkin in, next up is paprika, and her eyes are a little glossy, she's definitely gonna shed any day now. So let's put her in. Being real, real gentle, just let her go on her own. I don't wanna really lift them, pick them up. You know, this is my first time breeding, so I'm a little nervous. I know some people pick up their snakes when they're about to lay eggs, but this is my first time, so I'm just trying to be careful. So I wanted to give you guys a quick update. I told you guys paprika was about to shed and I just came back to look. She's looking real nice. So this might be her prelay shed. So maybe she'll be laying eggs in about a week or so, maybe. And She went to the bathroom. She took a Mondo Duke. That's what we call it, a Mondo Duke. So, she's looking real nice. I'll let her relax. I'm gonna go clean this up real quick. Just wanna give you guys that update. So next is Hansel, my male palmetto, my male het palmetto, het palmetto corn snake. And he's obviously not pregnant. So I'm gonna pick, put him in by hand. All right, there you go. So next is Gretel, my female, 100% head palmetto. And she's deep, deep, deep in shed. So she's probably gonna shed any day now. So I don't show this guy too much. This is one of my male California king snakes. So he always has this skull. He ha he's in an actual glass fish tank right now, like a little 10 gallon. So I'm gonna put him in this. It'll make it a lot easier for me to clean and do all that good stuff. And um, I'm gonna put the skull in there cause he always hangs out in the skull. So put that in there, put it towards the middle right there.
And this is a beautiful California king snake. Very interesting pattern. So I can't wait to pair him with a, with a female probably next year. So let's put him in. So next I have Sahara, my female Tarahumara Mountain King Snake. And I didn't I didn't breed her this year. She didn't pair because the male had got a respiratory infection. So she's not she doesn't have any eggs. I could pick her right up. Beautiful snake. Look at all those bands. I love the way the bands form with the deep bright red. So hopefully next year we get some uh, breeding going on with uh, Mojave and Sahara. This is probably one of my favorite types of mountain king snakes because they're so common in your hand. You know, some king snakes aren't that common. This girl, even the male, super, super common. So I'm actually using paper towel for her and the male Mojave. I don't know if the Aspen is working out for them too well. Well, for her it is, but I think they need something that could hold a drop more moisture. So I'm gonna be putting moist hides in for them and just using the paper towel so the aspen kind of gets really really dry and these are desert animals so they don't need a lot of humidity but they come from the mountains so they're having sometimes they'll have shedding issues so that's why i'm going to put them on paper towel with a moist hide so this is one of my female 60 40 high white cali kings and when i put her in this bin she was about half the size so she definitely outgrew this bin we're gonna give her a nice upgrade right now. She's gonna go from a Honda Civic to a Bentley. Honda Civic to a Bentley. Nice big upgrade for her. She's gonna be in heaven in this new bin. So this is another one of my female 60-40 Cal Kings and some people call them 50 50 uh, but i think they have a little bit more white than black so i call it 60 40 and she's gonna go in as well now this helps me out a lot i got uh, snakes coming out of quarantine snakes outgrowing some bins so all these snakes that i'm showing you just got upgraded couple came out of quarantine so they went from the quarantine bin into the racks and everyone's looking healthy and happy All right guys, so I filled up the tower. Um, the top two levels are vacant. The penthouse, those two penthouse suites on the top two floors, they're vacant. I don't have anything to put in there yet. I do have Kane and Riddler, my male Okatees, but they're in a nice display tank, so I'm gonna leave them in there. And when any snakes get pretty big, I'll move them up to the penthouse. Now, if you guys wanna learn how to build this rack, I'm gonna leave you a card above. I mean above. Just click that card, it'll take you to the video of how I built this. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free, leave comments. I'll respond to you right away. And I hope you guys are safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.